Hey everyone, Richard here. Uh, so it is time for a, another top 50. Um, as you saw from the thumbnail, this is round two. Uh, my first one went really well. It seems like the community is a little starved for this sort of content right now, so I figured I'd throw together another one. So it's going to be another top 50 books in my collection. None of the same books from the first video. So I guess it will end up being my top 100. Um, with a few caveats, I'm not pulling out my CGC books again because I already put those away. Um, but there will be some CBCS books at the end. Uh, but mostly raw books in this one. So uh, with that, we'll just sort of get into it. And if you haven't done one of these yet, get to it. Um, I could do two, you can do one. <laughs> All right, so first book, Venture Into Fear, number 19, First Parents of Howard the Duck. Uh, I actually found this in two other copies of the same book, so three total from a place called Bookman's here for $2 each a couple years ago. Um, I don't mind sharing the name of that place because that is not the place to find jails on comics anymore. In fact, their, their comic prices are pretty bad now. Um, so glad to have grabbed this when I did. Alias number one, uh, First Prince of Jessica Jones. Really, really good read. Um, and I'm sure you all know about the, the Netflix show. Uh, but if you've never actually read Alias, I highly recommend it. Um, I believe it was the first Max series, and it's a really good one. Amazing Adventures number 11, first appearance of the furry beast. Uh, and it's one of the portrait sort of frame covers I like to collect, so. Great book. Kind of an underrated key too, in my opinion. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 33. I got this from Tucson Comic Con two or three years ago. Uh, I think this is Ditko's best work. Um, classic cover, classic story. And just one I'm very happy to have. Really nice shape, except for some Marvel chipping. So, what can you expect for a book this old? Amazing Spider-Man 100. Um, for those of you who have been around for a while, I won this in the Doom 143's 100 subscriber contest. So quite a ways back, um, I was the first place winner, and I got this. Um, I believe he gave out the issue 100 for several different uh, titles. Of course, I went with Spider-Man, so great book. Next up, Amazing Spider-Man 121, Death of Gwen Stacy. Uh, lower grade copy, but this was a gift, so that's kind of partially why it made it into the, uh, the list for me. And it's an iconic cover, so yeah. Amazing Spider-Man 299, uh, first cameo of Eddie Brock Venom. Newsstand, classic cover. And if you're showing 299, might as well show 300. Um, again, classic cover. And that's probably, I think it's probably the most homaged cover ever. So there's that. Got a show a variant. Uh, back when J. Scott Scam Campbell was sort of doing his best work, in my opinion. Uh, Amazing Spider Man 606. Sort of the black and white sketch version of this cover, um, but still really nice. I'm going to cut here for a minute and we'll be right back. All right, next up, got Astonishing Tales number 12, our first comic book appearance of Man Thing. Uh, we got Savage Tales number one, this is his sort of magazine appearance. Um, unfortunately, he's not on the cover, but still a really nice cover, and it's one of those frame covers I like very much, so had to throw it in there. This book has exploded. Um, I picked this up for like $4 uh, a ways back. Now it's worth considerably more than that. Avengers Annual 10, first appearance of Rogue. Uh, I think this is probably the ugliest first appearance cover there is. Um, I think it's underrated as a result. If she was on this cover, I'm sure this book would be much, much more sought after. But still, happy to have it. Gotta throw a variant in here, uh, Black Widow number one, Scarlett Johansson photo variant. I'd love to get her to sign this at some point, but I, her signature is really hard to get, so I don't know if that'll ever happen. Um, but still, as a Black Widow fan, I'm very happy to have this book. So yeah. Another Black Widow book, because alphabetical order. Um, another J. Scott Campbell book. Um, 
I do like this cover. Number one. I believe this is the one in 50. Um, it's either one in 25 or one in 50. But still, great, great cover. And like I said, Black Widow fans, so I have to throw some Black Widow in here. Next, Conan the Barbarian, number 23. Uh, sort of a recent pickup for me, but first appearance of Red Sonia. And this is a full appearance. I don't know why 24 is called the first full appearance. She's in like over half of the story multiple times. I don't understand. I really don't understand the labeling on that. Uh, this is her full, full appearance. Uh, Iron Man 128, Demon in the Bottle. Um, I don't know if this would have made my list otherwise, but this is signed on the first page by Bob Layton. Uh, yeah, I'm going to sign it at Tucson Comic Con a few years ago. Uh, so, yeah. Classic, classic cover. Another book signed by Bob Layton, Invincible Iron Man number 150, signed right here in yellow paint pen. And great, great Doom cover. Because I'm a fan of Doom. Got to put some Moon Knight in this. So, uh, Marvel's Fight Lot 28, his first solo story. Marvel Superheroes number 13. Uh, again, a recent pickup. Low grade book, but still a pretty important book. Uh, first Trans of Carol Danvers. Mylar really helps how this book looks because this is a beat, beat copy. But nevertheless, it's, it's mine. Marvel Superheroes Winter Special. Uh, first appearance of Squirrel Girl, um, which was a D Steve Ditko story and art. So. Pretty cool in that regard. Um, this one really holds its value well. It's kind of surprising. Picked this up for a dollar again at Bookman's years ago. Marvel Tales, Peter Porker, the Spectacular Spider-Ham, number one, first appearance of Spider-Ham. I don't even remember how I got this. I think it was sent to me by mistake, and they told me just to keep it as a result, so I'm not complaining. Really nice high-grade copy. Marvel Team Up number one. Very uh, classic cover, classic series. Uh, it's one of the defining uh, books for the Bronze Age. Uh, and it's a frame cover too, so very happy to have this in my collection. Uh, these next three books are sort of a set. Um, Miss Marvel 16, 17, and 18. I picked these up at the Tucson Toy Show two or three years ago for two dollars each um so i was very happy to have found these uh cameos and first appearance of mystique so yeah this is actually my favorite cover of the lot but uh this one's sort of the money book so yeah again very happy to call these mine and to get them at the price i got them a classic cover Marvel Secret Wars number eight, the origin of the symbiote suit, not the first appearance. Um, I guess first in continuity, but not in comic book sales. So, yeah, newsstand copy. The Century number one, kind of an underrated book in my opinion. Really hard to get in high grade uh, because of the black cover. I might just submit this eventually because this is probably a nine eight, um, nine six minimum. Great, great cover. Uh, I've been talking about this book for a long time. I think the first time I showed this was in my 10th or 11th haul ever um, when I picked up this whole series and sort of talked about it. Uh, it wasn't really sought after then, but it is now. Uh, Sensational She-Hulk she number 40, the infamous jump rope cover where she's jump roping nude but she's really not. Uh, she's clothed. You, it's in the first few pages of the book, but still a very classic John Byrne story that arguably left to him being pulled off the book about 10 issues later. Um, sort of the beginning of the downfall of this series, in my opinion. Um, but classic. Another J. Scott Campbell cover. 
Um, this is the first appearance of Gwenum, signed by him. This book surprisingly has held its value really well, which is why I'm keeping it in this uh, top 50. And it's a pretty decent cover. I really like the colors on it. Another classic, Star Wars number one. Um, yeah, what more is to say? It's Star Wars. Big Star Wars fan. Uh, I almost threw this in my first video, my first top 50, but because this isn't the highest of grade copy, I decided to leave it off. But it's still going to make it into this one. Next book, Tower of Shadows number eight. This book by itself wouldn't make the top 50, but it's actually signed by Bernie Wrightson right here in pen. Uh, it's an older signature, probably from the 80s. Uh, so it sort of just gets thrown in here for that sort of cool factor. Um, yeah. Uh, so we're going to cut here, and we'll get another stack of books, and we'll be right back. All right, next stack. First up, Ultimate Spider-Man number one. Ultimate Spider-Man was one of the earliest stories I actually read. Uh, I had collected comics for a long time, but I really only just flipped through them and enjoyed the art. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man got me into comics, and the death of Peter Parker was probably it's probably my second favorite Spider-Man story ever. Um, first being Kraven's Last Hunt. Uh, this one is signed by Mark Bagley right here. Uh, I'd like to get Casada on it at some point also, but for now, very happy to have this. Um, shout out to Mr. Rick Mortis because he got this signed for me. So, yeah. This one almost made my original top 50, so uh, it had to be thrown into this one. Werewolf by Night, number one. Probably about a fine, a fine plus, somewhere in that range. Um, but yeah, just a great, great book. Happy to have it in my collection. Next up, a book that took off not long ago. Um, not sure if it deserved to take off, but either way, happy to have it. What if number 10, Jane Foster as Thor, or I believe she goes by a different name as Thordis, uh, but still, very cool book. Throw in the top 50. This book probably should have made it into my, my last video. I actually forgot I had it until I was digging again. Um, All-Star Western number 10, First Appearance of Jonas Hex. This is actually a really nice copy. Uh, I don't know why I haven't graded it yet, but still. I actually got this at Tucson Comic Con two years ago, so. Great book. Next up, Birds of Prey number eight. Just a classic book. Nightwing and Barbara Gordon. Again, a book that probably should have been in my top 50. Um, it's a book I want to upgrade, which is kind of why I left it out of the last video. Uh, but Detective Comics 359, Free Experience of Batgirl. Really nice presenting copy. Shout out to uh, Leonard20GK. When he gave this to me, he didn't have that many grandkids. Um, but this was an A-OK. -okay. Green Lantern, Green Arrow, number 85, the drug issue. Uh, definitely a prize book of mine. Strange Adventures 187, first appearance of the Enchantress. Uh, sort of a lower grade copy. Um, probably like a 3.5 or so, but still, great book. I think a lot of people don't realize that she's actually right here on the cover, so yeah, very happy about that. Sorry about that cut, I got a phone call. Um, anyway, back to where we were. Uh, next book, Superman number 50, the Joshua Middleton variant. Um, kind of a tough book to find, uh, a little underrated, I think. Um, kind of an interesting book because it's just colored pencils, or how do I say that differently? Uh, it was never inked. Uh, it went straight from pencils to colors. Uh, Josh thought it would look better that way. Um, and it definitely gives it a distinct look, so very, very nice book. 
Next up, uh, I used to have several copies of this, but I got rid of most of them. Um, kind of an underrated book. Superman Adventures number five, uh, first appearance of Livewire. I think it's one of those classic animated covers. Uh, shout out to Tito Kingdom Comics because he sent this to me. Um, definitely a underrated key in my opinion. Uh, Tales of Teen Titans number 44 for appearance of Nightwing. Um, I have such a hard time finding this in the wild. I've looked all over, even for wall books, and I can never find it. Um, probably because it's a popular character and it's still a rather affordable book. Um, so again, thank you, Tito, because I probably still wouldn't have this if had you not sent it to me. So, great book. Another recent pickup, uh, Wonder Woman 204, first appearance of Nubia. And a really, really great yellow cover. The colors really pop on this particular copy. Um, so very happy to have it. Yeah. Had to throw at least one Archie book in here. Um, I figured this was a good one to show. Archie Comics number 68. It's a classic Ronnie cover. I sort of consider this the counterpart to number 50, which has Betty front and center. Um, a book I want, but haven't had a chance to find one that really suits me. Um, but in the meantime, happy to have this one, especially because I'm a Ronnie fan over Betty. So, yeah. And the last Raw book, uh, another shout out to Mr. Rick Mortis because he got this signed for me. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. This is the fifth print, signed right here in silver. It's actually a pretty cool wraparound cover, but I'm not going to pull it out. Um, so yeah, there's that. So, quick cut. I'm going to grab a few CBCS slabs and I'll be right back. Alright, we're back. Uh, so these first two are sort of a set. Um, Still Ill Princess number one. Signed by Dan Mendoza, both 9.8s. Uh, this book is limited to 80. And it was sort of like his anniversary special. Uh, it sold out within a few hours, and he created a second print version with a different cover. Uh, this is definitely the harder one to get a hold of, so happy to have this set in my collection. Next up, this almost made it into my first video, just because I'm a huge fan of this franchise. Uh, I got it um, signed at the most recent Tucson Comic Con by Mark A. Nelson. Aliens, number one. First appearance of Aliens in comics. Um, for a while, there was a Dark Horse Presents issue that people were calling the first appearance, but this book actually predates it by about six months, so this is definitely the first appearance. Next book, Dead World number 10. This is the graphic cover variant. Um, there's a front cover, but what we really, what we really care about is this back cover, uh, because this is an early pro, uh, I guess, ad, um, signed by James O'Barr. Predates his, uh, first book. Another book I got signed at Tucson Comic Con a few years ago now, um, Justice League of America number 75, uh, first Black Canary, uh, I believe it's Diana Lance, forgive me if I'm remembering that incorrectly, um, but yeah, definitely a classic cover. Uh, Denny O'Neill had said that when he worked on this book there was some buzz that it was a sexist cover. Um, he made the wise crack that people thought they were misbaking sexist for sexy. Uh, but either way, very happy to have this in my collection. Fantastic Four, number 86. I'm sure some of you will recognize this book. Um, CBCS 8.0, signed by Joe Sinat. I don't know if you can see the signature, because it doesn't show up on camera very well, but it's right here. Uh, really nice looking book. It'd be much higher grade, but there's a very small stain on the back cover that really hammers it because none of the greeting companies like stains. Uh, 
Otherwise, I think this would be a high nines book, no problem. Um, but either way, very happy to have this in my collection. And the last book has to be from my favorite all-time artist. Uh, definitely one of his more underrated covers. It used to be a dollar book, um, but it's gone up a little bit since then. Uh, I think it characterizes his, his style really well, or at least his older style. Uh, X-Men Unlimited, number 47, uh, CBCS 9.8, signed by Joshua Milton. Uh, shout out to Spidey Fan for getting this signed for me, um, but still, definitely a prized book of mine. And yeah, that's my second top 50, round two, if you will. Uh, hope you all enjoyed. If you haven't made one, uh, make one. I need content to watch, and if I've made two, I'm sure you can find the time to make one. Uh, so yeah. Hope you're all staying safe and take care, everyone.